to the 1800s, and some of them are little autograph books, and some of them, some of those are, a couple of those are really cute because they're, they're like students from Ledger and Gilsbury who went to NFA, so, so that's, that's got that uh, connection up here too. We also have a really great collection that was donated um, recently um, um, by, um, a local family, and it's newspaper clippings about Ledger and Gales Ferry, and it was started in, I think it was the 1980s, and it goes all the way through just, just past the millennium. Mm -hmm. So it covers sports, it covers car accidents, I mean, it's just like anything and everything. Um, businesses coming and going, the whole controversy about the whole tribal um, history, and the casinos, and all of that stuff. So that's a really, really great resource if you're looking for Probably more local history, but um, if you do have some, um, if you're if you're interested in that sort of thing, um, we do have that. Um, we do have some also. We have some some newspaper clippings from the early 20th century um, that were done by um, Mr. Perkins. He was a newspaper reporter, and I want to say it was for the Bulletin, but I I can't can't remember right now because I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but um, but we have those and. Um, we also have an obituary file too for people from Ledger and Gales Ferry, um, going back pretty far. So, so we are, we're happy to look look things up for you, or if you want to come in and dig through, that's fine too. It's just just a card file, but um, but we've um, whenever possible we've actually cut out the actual articles and, and attached them, so you have those. Um, it's it's very easy to search. Um, we have so many things that I cannot even tell you. <laughs> really cool things, just like everybody. We have yeah. all these wonderful treasures, and if you ask us questions, it'll probably pop into our heads. It's like, oh yes, I do have something on that. So, so please um, feel free to dig around in here. Um, let's see. Actually, this one up here is probably the better one. Um, I just want to show you one or two little pictures. Um, the people one. We've adopted um, oh, she's not there. Um, we adopted the um, the old Gales Ferry Ferry um, woman as kind of our. She's the host of our Facebook page. Um, Latimer Bowles is her last name, and um, she she actually rode across the um, Thames every day over to Montville to get the mail uh, in the <laughs> early 20th century and late. 18th or 19th century so um, but yeah so 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 we have lots of things and and like Kathy said too um, let's see there we go like like Kathy said we also have there she is Gertrude right there um, we also have a what we call the uh, curator's curiosity page so we sometimes will will post things here that we're just not quite sure what they are <laughs> we found them or we don't know who they are um, so we also um, we do have, oops. we do have also in our, in our book collection, we do have Barber collection books um, for not only our town, but several other towns. And um, let's see, I'm so sorry. <laughs> we do, we, we also have some maps and we also sell copies of the Ledgered um, um, Beards Atlas page from 18, ooh, 1842, I think it is. I could be wrong on the date, but anyway, mid-1800s. Mid a, lot, a lot of our organizations have these atlas pages. We've actually reproduced them, and all the money goes back to help us with our digital collection. But it's a really cool map because it actually has people's houses listed on it, like who lived where, and it's in Berkey. The other side of that is that if you have family members who the future generations who may not be interested and they're all saying, Mom, clean out your house, I'm going to throw away, um, we can be a safe haven for you too as well for your, for your ledger and Gale's Ferry and your materials as well. And if you're worried about confidentiality, we can, we can make sure that nothing is um, released to the public for whatever number of years you choose. Or if you'd like to apply, we can, you can purchase copies of them there at local libraries and also at We also, um, the Electric Historic Society also owns the collection inside the house in the barns over there. So, uh, so if you're looking for quotes or artifacts and things like that, the local family perhaps we have something that might be treated that you can come and look at um, there as well. So, uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank you.
Society of Founders in Norwich uh, were the owners and operators of the Eleven Wall Historic House Museum, uh, circa 1675, the Carpenter Silver Smith Shop, circa 1772, and the Greenleaf House, uh, which is circa 1758, and is closed probably permanently, <laughs> but closed. Um, as the Society of the Founders, we, you know, one of our slogans is, we preserved Norwich history since 1901. The society was founded in 1901 as a genealogical society, probably the oldest in the city. Uh, re and we were li reliving history since 1960, and that's when we opened the Lefting Wall House Museum in 1960. The Lefting Wall House was bought by, bought by the society from the state to save it from being just uh, torn down when they ran Highway 2 through, the connection through. Mm -hmm. By the way, which is about the same time the oldest house in Norwich went away, the Randall House. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Whoops. The first thing I do is not know how to back up. The up and down, uh, the back and forth arrows on the keyboard worked better for me than those things. Okay. Um, Okay. Well, there's always escape. <laughs> and there's always do that. Yeah. That. <clears throat> okay. Um, by the way, um, on the first slide, it was a 1889 map of Norwich. I, uh, in the backgrounds, I've thrown different things in just out of curiosity for you. Um, this is, uh, so I'm the presenter. Our archivist is Louise Leak, who unfortunately isn't here because she'd be talking. <laughs> and she can talk the language a lot better than I can. Um, that's an old postcard from uh, the 250th uh, centennial, whatever they would call it. Anybody ever see that before? That's the uh, California arrow, uh, and the guy controlled the uh, the elevator up and down by running back and forth in the framework. <laughs> but uh, that's the old harbor too. You can see this uh, the side wheel paddlers down there, and that again, you are unfortunately in the hands of an archive, so I have things. <laughs> uh, these are the names of the settlers, uh, the first settlers in Norwich. The upper date's a little bit in question. Um, Norwich was purchased from uh, the Mohegans in 1659, but um, this is the date of the first settlers as was approved by Reverend James Fitch. There was actually two others that he didn't consider worth putting into the original list. So there's 35 original settlers and names that you see and recognize. And uh, we have information on 80%. But our information, uh, what you need to understand, is we are very narrowly focused. We focus on the beginnings of Norwich to the, about the uh, Civil War, and that's it. Past we that, pick up we don't very care. well there. Yeah. <laughs> past, past that, <laughs> we, we, we tend not to, uh, we have stuff around, we have Civil War stuff and that sort of thing, but we tend not to, not to follow that because it is really our, our, uh, our mission to, control, uh, to uh, honor the history of the founders. 
Um, this is a, you can't see too well. Uh, this is an account book, otherwise called a day book. This happens to be Thomas Leffingwell's when he was a tanner in uh, 17, it's, uh, 1750s to, to the uh, late 1700s. We have probably 15 to 20 day books, what I call day books. If you're interested in researching what somebody did, what they bought, how they lived, these are very good documents. Not digitized. I, I got to say that the things that we have, we have in hard copies in, in, as primary sources. Um, but it's like we originally had a, a, a clockmaker who was writing a book on another book on clocks um, come in, and he went through the, all the day books that were pertinent to find out that while we had 28 clockmakers, we only had two case makers. So in Norwich made cloth, the cases are very identifiable in the, because there was only two, two people. Felix Huntington being one of, one of them that were the makers of the cases. We literally have hundreds of this kind of stuff. Um, this is a land deed transferring from the, I don't want to put it, out of Wanhood to uh, <laughs> Mason, John Mason in 17, one or something like that. Uh, oh, a land deed transfer, uh, doing transfer for, uh, I think, Wyndham. This is how Wyndham came, get, was, when Wyndham was bought from the Mohegans. We also have the land deeds for Chelsea's Parade, the Norristown Green, uh, you know, the original land deeds. And we also, and then you get into, uh, get into some of these people. We have files of letters. Um, we have some trans, starting to get some transcribed. Uh, here's a transcription of a uh, indentured servant document. And uh, Faith uh, Davidson, if you know her from uh, Mohegans, um, she's the one who's been kind enough to take it on as a hobby for us. And uh, she does direct transcriptions, so they are as accurate as they, they can be made. We, it's, it's a slow process to get this done. But, um, if, if you've got a, a, a quantity of original uh, documents, how have you transcribed them? How have you got them into a form that somebody can read? Because pretty soon nobody's gonna be able to read this stuff. Yeah. But uh, so th this is just uh, talks about uh, a farm in Basra and the children and the parents died, etc. Um, what year? Hmm? What year? 1835. Yeah. 1835. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> 1835. Um, we also have uh, the. Uh, Probates, wills of different people, of different people, uh, people. Uh, a selection of books, some of which are somewhat unique to us. Uh, I got a couple back there. Um, the oldest book we hold in our library is uh, 1658. So, and I've actually got books that have wooden boards on them. Mm. <laughs> what are they? Okay, some materials that we have. We have Sedman starting around 1850. Um, many books self-published by the Norwich families. Um, like the, a book on a Fitch family, a book on uh, oh, the Williams family, which I got back there. And uh, another book with 